Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am here outside an appropriate place, which is the climbing hut in Ellesmere Port. Massive bouldering centre here, really great. Do a lot of my training here when I'm at home. Um, and today's video is something which is kind of unusual for me. I'm quite experienced in a lot of sports, but today I wanted to talk about my experiences of my first six, first six months climbing. I think it's important though, before you start talking about those lessons and the progress that I've made, in that time to kind of put me into context so that people you know people like to compare to each other in summary i've basically now consistently climbing v3s some v4s and i did my first v5 um two weeks ago which was actually officially the six month anniversary of my first climbing session so i want to take you a little bit on that journey well first let's put myself into context the progress that you make is going to be determined in any sport by two things really is one is your capacity to have the the energy and the um, time to take part in the sport and then the other side of that is your ability to tolerate the amount of time that you can put into it so so first and foremost the progress that I've made I'm going to caveat with could I have made more progress in that time possibly but if I tried to train as much as I could have done or made climbing a primary focus of mine or bouldering a primary focus of mine, is there an increased risk that I might not have recovered and ended up getting injured? The answer to that is yes. So a lot of this is ifs, buts, and maybes. So please don't take what I'm saying here as gospel. It's not meant to be a training program. It's not meant to be advice on how you should train. It's just things that I've learned along the way. So in terms of me as an athlete, I already have a good endurance base. I was already running ultra marathons. I've always got a good strength. I've always I've already had a good strength base. I compete in powerlifting. So in terms of being able to do pull-ups, body weight work, being able to basically manipulate my body body weight is something that I'm quite um, quite uh, experienced in. I come from a wrestling and a combat sports background, so my my understanding of body movement is also quite reasonable. So you know, putting together arms and legs into coherent movement patterns is something that I have experience of and something that, you know, is, is I would say, on some level translatable. The main translatable strength, I would say, is strength. Um, you know, the ability to do pull-ups, the ability to kind of, I guess, cheat yourself into positions because you have the strength to do that. In some senses, in some senses, is a good thing, but in other senses, it's a bad thing because I think it's very easy to kind of bludgeon your way up walls if you're quite strong and fit. Whereas you don't necessarily learn the technical aspects. So I think everybody's journey is going to be determined by their kind of natural strengths at the start. And, you know, when you reach each progression and um, barrier, as it were, between where those things are. But for most people, I'd say the determining factor is going to be grip strength and finger strength. So that's my background. Let me tell you a little bit more about my kind of journey. So first in my first climbing session in around about middle of November in 2022, and to be fair that was just like a fun day out it wasn't something i intended to go climbing it wasn't like right i'm going to commit to climbing as a sport i was already training for ultra marathons always training already training already running my businesses spending a lot of time on the road so climbing was something i did did, as, did for fun and in my very first climbing session um that sort of being strong nearly uh being strong and possibly a bit delusional was nearly a problem because i overreached for something thinking i could do a kind of little dino -y type thing and proper wrench my shoulder and um, already had shoulder issues at that point from years of running into stuff playing rugby and wrestling um being slammed about wrestling so yeah that kind of i got the bug for it from the very first lesson but it meant that i couldn't really climb or do anything for a few weeks anyway so even though that was my start date my attention towards climbing was basically if it was something i could do socially if it was something where i had the time to do it as i had other priorities going on in my life and i would say from november until december january time that was really what i was doing i was climbing once a week maybe once every every two weeks if i was lucky because it just like i say it just wasn't the key focus one of the things that i did start doing though which which helped was um i started to do like little bits of specific grip strengthening stuff so just kind of like, you know carrying plates around with pinching with pinching and things like that just to develop my finger strength and to build a bit of muscular endurance back into my forearms really because it's something that you just don't do when you're running obviously and it's something that you just don't do when you're lifting weights you're not really holding on for things for a long enough duration to really develop that kind of um, that conditioning in your forearms and also you know the grip strength in specific positions like it's fine being able to grab a bar like this or hold you know handles like this but actually being in an extended position having to to pinch on things and crimp on things and those kind of tiny small little holes is something which you know became clear from the first session was going to be a limiting factor for me as well as some technical stuff so then that really took me up to january and i sort of progressed from sort of you know v2 
twos, I could climb fairly comfortably by then, and that was just committing to one session every couple of weeks. Then started getting to multiples once a week in January. It was that point that I started to really do what I do best, which is research. So that's when I really started to get kind of sucked into the culture of climbing, started watching a lot of YouTube training from guys like Lattice Training, started watching a lot of the top climbers, started watching a lot of the kind of the, the YouTubers around about their experiences. And I think that having a solid background in sports science myself really understands the sort of training programming, being able and, and my kind of career really as a, as a performance strategist allows me to kind of identify strengths, weaknesses and opportunities for progression. So I was kind of fully aware of what I needed to do and I'm very aware of my own body and how it responds to training. So I think that although in those first few months I could have been climbing more frequently, I think that because I climbed quite hard just because of the nature of who I am and the kind of pushing myself, I think that was actually fine as long as I was doing the supplementary stuff and as long as I was working on bits of mobility work and bits of general strengthening, like I say, the grip strength stuff. It was really then from January um, where even though my ultra running really ramped up, I'd done a big block of my volume of that training before Christmas. So I was actually kind of just focusing more on speed work and things. And I got my life set up in a little bit more of a structured way so that I could climb a little bit more. And obviously one of the advantages of climbing is there's climbing gyms all over the place now. There's bouldering gyms all over the place now. So that's when I decided to invest in my first pair of shoes. I'm not going to do a shoe video on that. It's probably people more educated than me on me out there. And then the, the next principle for me, you know, of training really is this idea of you just keep your base level volume. So you climb up, you can climb most of the time. You're just improving that climbing frequency. And through that climbing frequency, you're going to stimulate some of those adaptations. You don't, I didn't feel like at that point I needed to be too specific in what my weaknesses were. It was more about the fact if I do more of this, then things are going to get stronger as long as I'm providing adequate amounts of recovery. So from about January till March time, all I did was get in climbing gyms and just climb as much as I could. Climbing, you know, learning to take more rests, climbing with a bit of intent is something that I then started to do a bit more of. So really starting to project, project climbs, really working on kind of how to string things together, working on my root finding of root finding or root reading ability, sorry. That really then started to make a difference in terms of not feeling frustrated because a lot of the time at that point for sort of V2s and V3s, it wasn't so much a strength issue. It was either a fatiguing issue, so I had to do them quite fresh, you know, that's just building that training volume, or it was a it was a technical issue of not being able to read the root properly. So that kind of like really improved significantly up until sort of February. It was really then kind of February going into March where my ultra running season really started to kick off. So I had my first 50 miler event in the, I think it was the first weekend in March, maybe the 8th of March. But because then I go into running season, basically then everything else kind of calms down around that. So I was still lifting a little bit, but actually I started to use climbing as a bit of kind of recovery. Obviously it's hard on the hands, the body itself, like, you know, the core strengthening, moving my hips, I kind of called it all yoga at that point. So I was using it not to put a lot of pressure on myself, but I was still climbing quite hard. But I was also very aware that I was in a competition season, which meant that I wasn't really pushing myself with my climbing, which was kind of a good thing because it meant I was at lower risk of, of injury. So my hands would get tired and it was definitely you could feel it in your hands when you start to increase that training frequency. But that's when I was starting to go at least twice a week and, and three times a week when I could. And it was at that point going into April then that I really started. So less than six, seven weeks ago that I started to be a bit more, a bit more specific maybe or a bit more uh, structured with how I would put my, my climbing training together so that's when I really started to say okay well if we look at the components of fitness where I was weakest so one is, is grip strength um, and, and muscular endurance which is like one session so I wasn't being too specific I was just having some structure put in really so my first session of the week then would be kind of like just a, a, a very volume based session so it would be climbing grades that I could climb fairly consistently and just trying to work on just getting through those working on reading the routes and trying to climb those as efficiently as possible so i wasn't climbing particularly hard on those days but i was building a lot of climbing volume doing lots and lots of climbs so that would be like a monday session then on a thursday would be kind of like what i would call in the equivalent of endurance world like threshold work so i was climbing like right on my grade so it would be something that i was projecting something that i knew i could complete if i just put a bit of time and energy into it and that really then tried to carry over from doing that technique stuff working on the footwork working on sort of reading routes and trying to apply that to, to kind of see and put into practice kind of like you know those really hard efforts where i think most of my adaptation in the week was kind of taking place was in that in that session in terms of like that was where I really had to put a, put a lot of energy into it and really kind of have a bit of intent. So that was kind of like my hardest session. And then on a Friday or a Saturday, 
I was doing then um, a combination of climb specific training. So I'd started to incorporate some fingerboard work. So just kind of holding on for sort of sort of 10 to 15 seconds, whatever grip I could, working on a combination of like sort of um, like pinches, like like crimps, sorry, crimps and then like sort of pinch holes. And, and then kind of starting to work to do some single arm pull-up type work, you know, obviously assisted and, and sort of pull-ups off different holes. Again, not going to go into the programming element of that, but it was very much kind of just, you know, doing a few sets of that kind of work, just trying to engage those muscles in my hands and my forearms um, and shoulder stability related. Again, so working through kind of a bit of muscular endurance, but also kind of really getting those fingers to be conditioned in a more controlled manner rather than ripping my fingers, my skin off on the wall um, at harder holes. And then that session then was combined with trying to climb like a grade or two up, um, not not like with maximum effort and not really bludgeoning myself, but just kind of getting into different positions and different moves just to get a feel for those things. Because I think psychologically, when you can kind of hold those smaller, those smaller holes or you can work out how to move between even just one or two moves, on a, on a more difficult um, a difficult project. When you then take that step back down, everything sort of seems that little bit easier. The equivalent of that, I would say, is when I used to be a powerlifter, well, I still am a powerlifter, when I used to take powerlifting more seriously, is, you know, you'd always have, a, if you were moving up a significant amount of weight, or just moving up any weight, really, or something that you were a little bit scared of, you know, lifting heavy, um, it would be one of those things where you would kind of, you would put the weight on your back, for example, in a squat, and you would just feel the weight or just do like a partial repetition or something like that, just so you had the confidence that you could, you know, hold that weight and, you you, you know, you're not going to die, basically. And climbing, I'm sorry to say, a similar approach, and I definitely think there's a lot of carryover from that. So I was trying quite hard on those sessions, but it was kind of nice to take a lot of pressure off yourself and, and learn to be frustrated as well. So I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned was like your training doesn't have to be super specific early on to make those grades. I think once you start getting now to sort of V5 and above, I think for me, it's very clear there's things that I need to work on. I'm not going to tell you what those things are because I'll probably cover that in the video. But first few months, it was more about just creating a training frequency that um, my body could handle and recover from. And then it kind of, tra and then it translated into kind of a bit more, increases in frequency, a little bit more specific structure to those sessions, but also, you know, trying to kind of integrate myself into the climbing community, like not being afraid to ask people for help, you know, asking people for beaters for stuff, like not just asking for the, for the, uh, for the, you know, the cheat code straight away, but trying things. And then when you're struggling, like watching other people, integrating yourself into their kind of climbing groups in a polite, friendly way, not just shoving your way in, obviously, but really not being afraid to ask more experienced climbers kind of, you know, how they would do things or to show you things if you really are stuck. So I think that, you know, being able to take your ego off the table, which is something maybe historically in other sports that I've been involved with has been a really big thing and difficult to kind of ask for help, um, or at least, I don't know, maybe it's a male ego or whatever, but yeah, like, you know, historically it's something I wouldn't have felt comfortable doing, but I think the, the biggest lesson overall that I've learned is that like if you just climb and you climb safely and you work on the, the fundamentals, you'll make progress. And then the, the, just the, the, the frequency of that climbing will, will create most of the adaptations that you need. You don't have to be super specific early on unless you're in a sort of situation, I guess, like mine, where you can't climb very frequently and you really want to get good quickly. Well, then there's exercises that you can do at home which are going to increase your chances. But again, it still falls into the, the, the category of, well, can you handle this? And then I think the other lesson, like to be patient and not get frustrated with failure and also to accept that you're going to have good days and bad days, even watching like the better climbers on YouTube, you see that they have like bad days in the office, you know, depending on skin condition and you'll learn all about that stuff as well. So I think that's one of the other lessons is to kind of just listen to and watch as much content as you can on this subject and don't treat any one method as being gospel. I mean, I like the latest trading guys. For some things I like just watching other people climb for others just to see basically the fundamentals, like fundamental principles, but also human potential within that. And so that's what I'm kind of looking at now. It's like, I understand that as a, as a 90 kilo guy who's quite well muscled, who has other sporting commitments that, you know, I'm probably never going to ever climb like above, I don't know, I don't know, V8 v if I was being optimistic. I mean, that takes several years of climbing to get there. But I think that's part of the process is accepting that it's going to take time to get between grades and the, the higher up the grades that you get, the longer it's going to take to transition between them. So I went from V V0, V beginner, to V2, V3, like fairly quickly within a couple of months of not really climbing that much. But from V3 to climbing, you know, climbing consistent V3s, being able to kind of just look on, a, look at a wall quickly, jump on it and flash most of them. 
getting through 50% of my V4s with, you know, a few attempts and a bit of project and still struggling with a few more. And like being able to hit maybe one or two types of, you know, like slabby V5s, which are kind of suit my climbing style um, or big dino -y type stuff, again, which plays to my strengths, my explosiveness, you know, that sort of stuff is going to take increasing amounts of time so that, and I'm in the same position now in say six months time where I can walk into a gym and flash any V4. And I'm not suggesting that is definitely what's going to take place. What I'm saying is that now is the point at which things become specific. So for your first six months climbing, don't worry about being too specific unless there's something that's like clearly just a problem for you. Like if, you're, if you're scared of heights and you, you, that's what's holding you back, you know, work on climbing up some easier climbs and then get into the top to, to get that fear of heights. If you're then worried about falling off, you know, when you've got those kind of like crux moves where you're like losing balance and you're going to fall off, like climb up and do some controlled falls, some increasing heights, learn to fall properly. You know, that's one of the good things about coming from like a, a wrestling background, a jiu-jitsu background, is that I've learned to fall very effectively. And even being a bit of a lump, like you, even the high walls, like you fall and as long as you're in control and you know how to land, it causes a lot less fear, which then liberates your ability to climb a lot more. So, you know, figure out what your weak points are, whether it's a psychological thing or whether it's a physical thing. And I think initially that doesn't mean you need to follow any specific training programs. I mean, maybe you might progress quicker if you did that. But I think part of climbing, which is uh, a lesson, to, a part of the lessons that I learned from what two that people climb the same climb in very different ways, depending on their body, body type, body composition, you know, their, their arm length, their, their structure, their wingspan, all of that kind of stuff, their, their natural strengths and natural weaknesses. So it's important to kind of, yes, use those things as a template, but there's no experience for just getting on there and climbing and trying to figure some things out for yourself. Give yourself that opportunity and then ask for help. So that's it really, guys. That's what I learned from my first six months climbing. Um, I'm now into, well, now it's the 31st of May today. So six months was effectively two weeks ago. I've just been really busy running ultra marathons and training for that. And I've got a lot of other stuff going on at the moment. I've got business launch with the Invictus coming soon, which is great. It's just that, you know, it's just taking a lot of time getting those final things in place. So yeah, my climbing now for the next month or so is gonna basically be just kind of in maintenance mode. So like I've just been in today and just had like an awful climbing session. Well, I, I, again, what I said, I went back in after not climbing for a week or so, protect the feet for the ultra marathons, went back in and climbed V3s, flashed them all fairly comfortably. And then V4s, I was kind of struggling with a little bit today. Um, and then, yeah, had a play in a couple of V5s and failed miserably. But now I'm not really bothered about the next couple of months about stagnating in progress because I've got a lot of ultra stuff going on. I've got a, I had a 50 miler in March, didn't have anything for a little while. I've just swept the course. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it, it's irrelevant. But basically over the course of the weekend, I ran 70 odd miles. And then I've got my first actual race of the year in just over two weeks time now, two and a half weeks time, which is a 100K race. Once June's out of the way, my next event's out of the way, uh, I'll take a few days to recover from that and then I'm going to have a bit of a climbing focus block for four to six weeks where I'll probably go back to climbing two to three times a week for uh, most of July and into August and then I'm going to taper off towards the end of August because then I've got my big event which is uh, <laughs> which is a potentially a 300 mile event um, running event in September so yeah I'm obviously going to be very cautious with climbing one because of just picking up any silly injuries and two because like you know it's been really helpful for my foot strength for uh, ultra run and i've noticed some mad benefits from that but also because i uh, i just don't want to batter my feet any more than they need to be um being a heavier guy climbing in nice soft technical shoes um yeah my feet can take a bit of a beating so that's it guys hopefully that was useful to you if you're just starting out climbing enjoy it like i said don't don't feel any worry about falling off stuff like Get the experience yourself no one's there watching or judging you everyone is super supportive and super helpful if you have any questions ask it will save you a lot of time and just enjoy the journey and don't try and compare yourself to how fast you're progressing compared to other people on the internet and don't worry about how um how you might be progressing in relation to other people that you go with you know everyone's got their own strengths weaknesses life stresses all of that stuff which is going to really influence the way that they can climb uh, sorry to the ability that they can climb and then i think just understand that it's going to take time. Leave the ego at the door um, and learn to fail and not be frustrated and just go straight into self-reflective mode. This is what I did. This is what felt good. This is what didn't feel good. Right, what can I improve on next time? I think when people get this kind of 
uh, their perception is that they're going to go and be a ninja climber in uh, immediately they get frustrated so try and get your perception to meet your expectation see it as a sport that you're learning as a beginner in the same way you would any other sport where you wouldn't think you had a god-given right to go in and be a really high level athlete um and yeah treat it that way treat it with treat it with respect learn learn to uh learn to be patient and you'll go a long way right hopefully that was useful